Welcome to the Jewish Roots portion of Faith for Today. This is Pastor Don and Donna Long. We're so excited you stayed tuned to join us for this portion of our weekly broadcast. You know, in the book of Romans, Paul, who was a rabbi known as Rabbi Shaul, Paul writes to the Gentiles that we as Gentile Christians have been grafted in yes. to the root of the Jewish people. That means the very thing that sustains our life, the very thing that is meant to give life to us and meaning right. to us, comes out of our roots in the Torah, our roots in the Jewish people, that really we have been adopted into yes, and grafted have. into that root. That we do not, in fact, have a life apart from that. We do not That's have right. a life that we can live by our, ourselves. And in fact, he says, uh, we don't support the root, no, the but root it is the root that supports us. us. Uh, last week, if you joined us, we were talking about lighting candles on, yes. on Sabbath and yes. began a discussion about uh, why we light candles and what Sabbath is all about in that. And we talked about the fact that uh, in most Jewish homes and in many, many, many Christian homes, as Christians are beginning to understand and appreciate right. Sabbath, uh, God made that His commandment. It is my Sabbath. You are to observe it as a day of rest. That's right. It's part of the Ten Commandments. It precedes uh, Mount Sinai and the law because it goes right back into Genesis where on six days he labored, the seventh day he rested. That's, That's right. what Sabbath is all about. That's right. uh, in previous broadcasts we talked about Sabbath as being the seventh day. There's, there's no doubt about that. And we talked about how in, uh, in the Jewish reckoning, in the biblical reckoning mm -hmm. of time, That's that right. your day begins at sundown. Yes. And so Sabbath, which is Saturday, actually begins on what we would call Friday, Friday night. night. At so when the, when the sun goes down on Friday right. night, that ends Friday. That's right. And now you start Sabbath or you start uh, th that whole celebration. Of, that's when the day begins. That's right. And that the tradition among the Jewish people is that on Sabbath we light candles. That's right. Uh, that is a mark of delineation that separates uh, the uh, the mundane, ordinary week That's from right. God's special day. Yes. We talked about how the table would be spread with a, with a fine linen table or cloth, a special tablecloth. That's right. How and the family would be would dressed, dressed up, up in their best. And, and it's really a special day. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the blessing that is said over that. And in case you didn't join us last week, we ended the broadcast by lighting our, our Sabbath candles. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to light them again. Yes and uh, sing the blessing that we do in our family, that our church sings whenever as a church we gather yes. uh, and celebrate a Sabbath meal together. So uh, let's do that again. Let's Donna. do that again. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitchenu Bo Mitzvotav Vitzivanu lahad lipner shel shabos kodesh. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with your commandments, and in whose honor we kindle the light of the holy Shabbat. And that's how we would begin our our celebration of Sabbath with that meal together, a meal yes. time, separating it from. Uh, the world before. Now, let's talk about that separation, Donna. Yes. Let's talk about, um, you know what happens when you leave the six days of the week That's where right. we are told, those are the days in which we work, we earn That's our right. living, and we enter into that seventh day of rest. Yes. What's happening in that? Well, I think on the last broadcast you had mentioned how when you were um, had a secular job, you were working in the workforce there, and when it would get to be about three o'clock in the afternoon yes. that you began an anticipation arising in you. But before we did Shabbat, you probably were like the rest of the world and you would say, thank goodness it's Friday, that catchy little f phrase there. But this, once we began discovering the richness of Sabbath, and we began celebrating it within our own home, there was a change, that, an internal change that took place inside of you, deep within inside of you. It was no longer, oh, you know, thank goodness, I'm going to go home and I'm going to crash. Now it was, thank go God, thank mm -hmm. the Most High God, that I have the privilege of now letting go of this and entering into a whole new dimension of richness with Him that I've never had before. And that anticipation was much different than, thank goodness it's Friday. It was, thank you, Abba, that you've given me a day that is holy unto you that I can enter into. 
I, you know, I think about that in terms of, you know, you have before and after. That's right. Be, before you knew something and after you know it. And, right. uh, you know, even, uh, even when we didn't observe Sabbath, That's right. there, there really was no night where you let go. No. So, mm -hmm. like it, when we worshiped on Sunday as a family, Saturday was busy right up to the, right up till to you the last finally crashed and right. went to bed. That's right. And so you woke up in the morning, you had whatever sleep you have, and you rushed to go rushed to church. Rushed to go to church, that's right. And, in, and like most Christians, you know, mm -hmm. you're running around, you're getting dressed, you eat a breakfast, mm -hmm. you, you run to church, and, and you, you go to church for an hour or two hours, yeah, whatever, whatever right. your church service that's is. Right. And then you run home. And, you know, historically, Sunday afternoon used to be for a lot of people rest. Mm -hmm. But in, in our contemporary culture, it's Sunday not, no. isn't, isn't even. Someone to go shopping that. or something like that. That's right. And then before you know it, you're waking up and it's Monday and morning it's Monday again. Morning and again. you're already back into the drudgery of the work week. Right. And, and so you, you have this continual cycle. That's right. And you, you go to church. But it really is, God was never talking about That's going right. to church. No, he was not. What he talked about is that there's a cycle that he set up. That's right. And it's a seven-day cycle. And God is very clear. Six, Six days, days you labor shall work. labor and work. That's but right. the seventh That's day right. is a holy day. It's That's all right. his day. That's right. It belongs to him. And we're to observe it and we're to separate it from the rest. That's right. And so I can remember, yes, on, on Friday, you know, looking That's at right. the clock and and trying to get in and, and rushing. I mean, it was mm -hmm. a rush because, right. oh, there's things I didn't get done That's and right. I want to get out. And there were Fridays where, oh, it might be five, but it might be six. six. It might That's be seven because I just had to finish up That's right. those things. And so then you came home and maybe it was late. Maybe the family already ate. That's and, right. you know, so Friday's wiped out and then Saturday you're trying to catch up. And as I said, that's, that, right. that's kind of the rat race. That's right. It sure was. When we began to celebrate Sabbath. That's right. Uh, I, I immediately understood what God said, and, right. and, and not to be legalistic, but God mm -hmm. said, it's my day. That's right. It, it's God's, I looked at it this way, you know, if, if, if Friday night uh, at work, they were going to have a party after work, and it was going to start at 6 o'clock, mm -hmm. you never worked overtime. No, that's right. In fact, people around the workplace would begin to talk, and that's at 4 right. o'clock, everybody's anticipating that's right. the party that's going to start at 6, mm -hmm. and so they start cleaning up their desks or doing mm -hmm. whatever their workspace so that they can leave at 5, so they can get to this party that's at right. 6. A sp it might be a retirement party for somebody. Right. It might or be a celebration. Or right. something like that. And, and, and so to honor the person and to have the fun, that's right. and, and we would let go of this because Friday night we're going to this party. Mm -hmm. That's well, right. Sabbath began taking that on to That's me, which right. was that, okay, this is God's party. Yes. <laughs> this is God's time. And he knows how to throw a party. <laughs> That's right. And, and, and God's going to start at sundown. That's right. So, you know, he's going to start in, in, let's say, 6 o'clock. So, That's right. 6 o'clock, we're going to light the candles, and we're going to begin our, our, our Shabbat. That's and right. so there was, it, it never entered my mind to start with, well, I'll be late. No. I mean, this is... Not out of a legalistic sense no. that, well, you know, if you don't do it at that time, God's angry. No, it was out of a heart desire. <laughs> it was, I, I want to be at Abba's party right, right away as soon as That's it right. starts. And so I, I, I was never late for that. That's right. But then became, not only was I never late, but where I, as you said, I began to get that hunger That's for right. it. That's uh, right. As and we it, a, a real excitement, a deep, deep inner core excitement about it. And I think that must go along with the fact of what Sabbath was all supposed to be about to begin with? What was his design? Why did he ordain this day and, and call, speak a blessing into it and set it apart from all the rest? What his intent is that in that day, you've been in the world, you've been doing all this, you've been working, making a living, doing whatever and all that. Actually, we live to give. We don't make a living. But, you know, it's like you're, you're just in that daily routine of things. And it's like, okay, now you're going to step out of that dimension and you're going to step to, into a whole new dimension where I'm going to minister life into you and fill you back up so that when the next day comes after Shabbat is over, you're so filled with him that you look on that next week in a whole different light. You're not exhausted coming out of Shabbat because you've spent time in his word, in his presence, in tune with him spiritually so that he can pour into you his life force that makes you go forth and be that light during the week instead of looking for something to fill yourself all week long like an empty black hole that cannot be filled with anything but him. 
You, you know, we talk about moeds, and we've had that discussion here before that, that moeds are God's appointed times. That's right. And we talked about uh, Passover, and we've talked about Pentecost, and we talked about tabernacles, That's and, right. and we just came through uh, celebrating Hanukkah. Hanukkah. And, and, and moeds of God, when God sets a, a side time uh, where He puts His blessing on that That's time. That's right. And Sabbath is a moed. Yes, it is. Uh, it's a divine appointment. You know, I, right. I tell people. You don't have to wait for the festivals or, or, or the, the holidays or the holy days, as we right. call them. You don't have to wait for that. Every week you have an opportunity to refuel, to re be reinvigorated, to be refilled with life. You know, when the, when the Bible talks about uh, the end times, about that millennium that, yes. that after the after Yeshua returns and, and there's the establishment of the church and the new temple and he, mm -hmm. and he reigns from Jerusalem and that thousand year reign of peace. That's right. The Bible's very clear. Yes, it is. And it says during that thousand years, not only will the whole world be celebrating the festivals, for example, That's the right. whole world will be going to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. That's right. But he says that at that time, the measure will be Sabbath will be observed throughout the world, and the other one is the celebration of the beginning the, of the month, the, that's right. Rosh, Rosh Kadesh, Kadesh. Uh, the new moon that's celebration. Right. That's that right. Interestingly, both those things, mm -hmm. the Bible says, that's will right. be celebrated will be. throughout eternity, and those are two things that Constantine, Constantine tried got to wipe out of the out, church. Tried to wipe it right out, and the Greeks did, didn't they? Right. On those so so as, the as whenever, whenever, right, when the Greeks took over during the period during before the Maccabees, Maccabees yep. uh, th th they wanted That's to. the very things they, they were trying they to say, wipe out. They said, we're not going to let you celebrate Sabbath, and, and we're, we're not going to let you celebrate, celebrate the, the, the new moon. Kadesh. And Constantine, same thing, when he came in That's and took right. over the church, it's now the official church of the empire. That's right. But you cannot celebrate Sabbath, and you cannot celebrate. And, and, you, and you have to stop and think, why? They aren't going to right. just choose insignificant things to wipe out. There had to have been a great significance in Shabbat, in Sabbath, Right. For them to be threatened by it enough That's that right. they have to wipe out every part That's of it, right. and you would be um, greatly punished right. if you did, if you were found celebrating right. Shabbat right. or the Rosh Kadesh. So, so, so in that injection, then mm -hmm. you had the the injection of the day of the sun. You That's have. Right. Sunday, mm -hmm. which we all know Constantine was a worshiper of the yes, sun. Yes, he was. Now, to be sure, the church couldn't just live with that, so they had to say, well, that was the day of the resurrection and, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth, right. and, and even that might be a, a mm -hmm. questionable That's thing. That's very questionable. But, yes. but we, what we know is that wherever the church moved, what it did is it violated the Sabbath and, yes. and the New Moon Festival. That's right. And, and I like it, I tell people this way, you know, my birthday is, is May 16th. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I say, I'm going to have my birthday party on my birthday, May 16th. That's right. And you show up on May 18th, mm -hmm. and you say, well, but we've decided to celebrate your, your birthday on May 18th. Well, I don't care what you call it. That's right. May 18th isn't Doesn't my birthday. Doesn't change the truth. <laughs> Doesn't change the truth. <laughs> Doesn't change the truth. And so people will is. say, well, you know, Sunday is our Sabbath. Mm -hmm. No, Sunday's not a Sabbath. Sunday no. is the first day of the week. You, you can say Sunday is my day of worship if you want. Yeah, but, you it's, can, but you cannot call it your Sabbath. Right. You can worship on Sunday. That's right. This you is, can worship on Sunday. It's not about when you worship. That. It's what do you do with the Sabbath. That's right. His Sabbath. And, and some people, I think, uh, misunderstand that. They yes. think that when we talk about honoring the Sabbath, well, you know, does that mean we can't worship? You can worship on you Sunday, Monday. Whenever Tuesday, you want. Wednesday, That's Thursday. Right. But the question is, what do we do with God's command That's of the right. Sabbath? That's and right. And what we found is that there is a blessing in that day. There is a and an that an if abundant blessing. We're just beginning to find the blessing. Right. And we've been at it a while, but it's like it's it's like a, a, a anything that's alive like that continues to grow. And it's like the more we uncover, the more we find there is to right. uncover. So there's there's an anticipation. This you know, I, I began to figure out very early that coming in and lighting the Sabbath candles did an interesting thing. That at the end of a normal work week, Monday through Friday, you come to the end of Friday, you're exhausted, right. and you carry that, that weight of the world, that mm -hmm. concern of the world, uh, all the negative things that happen during the week, you carry that into Friday evening. Mm -hmm. And so now you've got Friday evening and you go to bed and you're still tired from it and you don't really have a necessarily a restful night, or maybe you do things to try to escape the week. That's right. But you mentioned earlier, Donna, that it's like another dimension. Yes, it is. Yes, that, it is. That now, when, when you don't wait till Saturday, you don't wait no. till Sunday, it starts according to God's time, Friday night. That's right. So with the lighting of the candles, 
it's like literally you take off of you. That's right. Uh, the weight, the concern, the issues, and you step into a time space. That's right. It's his time space. That's his time space. It's actually out of time and space, really, because he's eternal. So That's there right. is no time and space in him. It's stepping into that um, out of the boundaries of time, I think, and into him. It's, he says, enter my rest. Mm -hmm. He always talks about that's a that's a ethereal thing that people have a difficult time grasping. But I think as we begin to under uncover the truth of what Shabbat really holds, uh -huh. that we will begin having a a larger capacity of understanding the spiritual concept of enter into my rest, and that's what we're beginning and, and, to and, understand. And, when you, and it is a whole new dimension. Well, and when you it understand is time it. less. When you understand it, it yes, is. We talked right. about that in a second here. Uh, when you understand it, then a lot of the understanding of our Jewish heritage, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Christians will look at things Jews do and they say, well, that's legalism, that's whatever, you know? And, and I, I don't meet a lot of Jews that are legalistic about it. They, no. There's a heart joy, that's there's right. a celebration. I look at I look at Orthodox Jewish families who truly celebrate Sabbath, and for the whole family, it is just a delight. It is. It's and, great and, joy during that time. <laughs> a, a, absolutely. And there are things that they cannot do. Now, be, they cannot do them because the Bible says don't do them, mm -hmm. but, or, or their understanding says their don't understanding, do them. Right. But, but what it is, is all those do nots are, God could have just as well said, the reason you're not going to do those is because I don't want that world of six days Entering getting into, into this, this world. That's right. So we don't get into financial transactions. That's right. we, we don't go to the store on Sabbath. Why? Right. Well, we can't. We really want to, but we no, can't. We no, don't. we don't want to. It, it's not behavior modification. It's heart transformation. Right. You step over a line and it just transforms the very desires, the deep desires of your heart. And it's, it's just a, a dimension that is just like so excellent. <laughs> so, so we